Hello everybody. Uh, we're going to try something kind of strange. I'm going to try to uh, talk to you about some of the stuff that we've missed uh, in lecture. So I'm going to try to um, face my camera towards another uh, uh, computer with a slide on there so you can see it at the same time or at times. Um, we, we're going to talk about uh, checking fluid level uh, on a transmission that does not have a dipstick. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this towards the slide and talk to you for a moment. So hopefully you can see that. Now, if you notice here, we've got, um, this is a front wheel drive, but it has a, and I'm sorry about the writing being backwards when I shoot the camera this way, this is what I get. But anyway, what we have down is right down towards the bottom here, we have what's called a dribble plug. And then on this one up top, we have a fill plug. So um, what needs to be done on a transmission that does not have a dipstick is, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to, um, First of all, get the vehicle warmed up to normal operating temperature. And uh, most manufacturers want you to use a scanner for that. Uh, we're not talking coolant or engine operating temperature. We're talking uh, transmission. So uh, a transmission has a uh, temp sensor in the transmission. So what you would do is you would uh, make sure that it reached the normal operating temperature. In most transmissions, you would then remove the dribble plug. Once the dribble plug is removed, uh, it, the fluid should dribble. It shouldn't drip, that's too low. It shouldn't run out, that's too high. But it should dribble, which is a very fast uh, drip, almost uh, turning into a stream. Uh, if it's too low, you're supposed to go to the fill plug. And uh, on some transmissions, that's right in the same exact spot as the dribble plug. On the transmission that I was showing you here, it's on the top. So you would have to leave the engine running the entire time uh, while you fill it. And then uh, while it, if you overfilled it while it runs back out to a dribble. And then even then, you need to get that plug in while it's running. If you shut the engine off, the fluid will come out uh, rapidly and so it has to remain running while you're checking the fluid okay um uh this transmission here uh it shows you if you guys can see it um this is a transmission pan right down here and then just above the pan there's a plug and right there on that plug is where you would both fill and drain the transmission, okay? Or excuse me, fill and uh, um, look for the dribble that you're supposed to have. Now we want to talk about uh, transmission flush machines. And you notice on this coil here, you see the, the dirty fluid coming out and the clean fluid going in. And then you can see a flush machine right over there. Uh, First of all, I want to say that a flush machine is not recommended by any manufacturer. It's not that it does a bad job. Um, really, I would describe it as a uh, fluid exchange machine, not a flush machine. Uh, the flush, uh, the, the reason they get by calling it a flush machine is they give you a chemical flush to dump in the transmission and then they want you to run the transmission through the gears run the transmission for a few minutes and then what you would do is you go to the uh, to the uh, cooler line and you would dis disconnect the cooler line and then uh, install or excuse me connect the hoses up to the uh, up to the cooler. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this very well. Let's try this again. This is showing uh, our pump here and our filter and basically what it's showing is the fluid is going to come out of the transmission and then it's going to go into the cooler over here and then it's going to come out of the cooler where it's cooled off, cooled off but it's gone through the cooler itself and when it comes out that's where they want you to hook the line in so basically you're running uh, the flush machine in series uh, so that the fluid that has come out of the transmission has gone through the cooler is now going um, through the uh, the flush machine. Basically, again, it's not a flush machine. The fluid just comes out. Once the fluid comes out into the machine, a new fluid goes back in. So again, a better description for it would be fluid exchange. 
but I also want you to realize that it's impossible to get all of the old fluid out. In fact, uh, as you may remember, uh, the fluid going into the torque converter goes through a hole that's about uh, 3 16 in diameter. And uh, it comes out of a hole about the same size. So, And we have approximately 3 to 4 quarts in the, um, in the uh, converter itself. So we've got fresh new fluid going into the converter mixing with the original fluid. So we get kind of a, a mixture is what we get that then eventually comes out... Uh, uh, and eventually it will come out pretty clean. Um, I, I have no problem with a fluid exchange as long as you realize it's not a flush uh, except for that uh, chemical that runs maybe five to ten minutes. Again, I'm not saying it doesn't work, but I'm not too convinced it does work. Um, most manufacturers, all they recommend is just simply a uh, uh, dropping the pan, uh, replacing the filter and the gasket if necessary and then uh, installing the amount of fluid that came out, which is usually somewhere between one quarter and one third of the entire capacity of the fluid. Uh, this shows uh, a, a type of fluid flush machine. Notice it's got two containers here on the inside. One will be filled with new fluid. The other one will, will uh, be a tank that allows uh, the old fluid that's coming out of the transmission to go into that. Um, and again, it, it does an awesome, wonderful job, but uh, it's not recommended by any manufacturer. So be careful that you don't recommend that. Or um, let me see, not the, that's not the term. Don't tell a, a customer they need to have it. Uh, it's fine to tell them that, uh, you know, uh, that you recommend it. But as long as you tell them it's not recommended by the factory. Uh, because BAR does not like uh, you uh, selling things that is not recommended by a manufacturer. Okay, um, and then also notice we've got some situations where like right here it says that uh, this fluid is uh, basically lifetime and uh, they tell you that you do not need to change it. This is BMW, the yellow label right across the pan. And, uh, and, and BMW does say their fluid is lifetime just like a lot of other manufacturers so um, it's kind of hard to convince BAR when they show up that you know you exchange their fluid for a good reason when the manufacturer uh, has a label right on the bottom of the pan saying not to so that's where we can actually uh, we have to be careful um, uh, I'm a transmission technician and I've always believed that uh, there's no such thing as lifetime fluid. I think fluid does get old. I think it does uh, lose its uh, properties of uh, uh, transferring heat, etc., and the chemicals for uh, lubrication, etc. So uh, I think it's uh, not a bad thing, but it is it is expensive and uh, not recommended by manufacturers. Um, planetary gears. We've talked about that. Okay, let's talk about, and I, I know the labeling is uh, uh, terrible here because it's backwards, but we're going to talk about the torque converter clutch. So, looking inside a transmission, we have, um, where are we at here? We have the impeller here, and then we have the a stator, we have the turbine, and notice we've added a new component in there, which is referred to as the clutch assembly or the torque converter clutch assembly, or the TCC, torque converter clutch assembly. So uh, this is a way of, of improving uh, efficiency. So if a, if a fluid coupling, a torque converter, is 90% efficient, efficient, excuse me, that's, a, that's amazing that uh, we can actually have something uh, that, that is connected with fluid that's 90% efficient. 90% um, sounds good until we talk about gas mileage. Uh, if you think about it, uh, if I get 10% less gas mileage with an automatic, that's not so good. Uh, and then we start thinking, where does that uh, extra 10% go and what does it do, do? It creates heat. So it actually um, kind of is tasking on the uh, fluid itself, uh, causing it to overheat. So it's a it's a good idea if we can eliminate that um, 
that inefficiency. So by putting a clutch in there, we can connect it uh, very much like a manual transmission clutch would be. And then we're 100% 100 per, 100 efficient uh, sending power through that torque converter. Uh, I'm going to have you go to, to video B here in a minute. This was video A.